Hi folks, hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I just want to go over some videos quickly because I want to spend a lot of time praying and, and getting ready for, for going to Holland and uh, preaching at this week at my home church and stuff. But uh, I just want to do some videos. Uh, my website's jasonburnspreacher.com and you can get me on Twitter if you type in Jason Burns Preacher, etc. You can get me on Facebook. You can get Royal Blood Ministries on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Okay. Um, I just want to talk about uh, Bob the Builder's uh, defense of scripture. Before I do, I just want to say I love Bob. Bob, I love you, bro. I think you're doing a great job. I think you're a great inspiration to people, and you've done a marvelous work. And uh, everybody has, has just been blessed by what you're doing. So this is not an attack on you as a person or on your work because you're doing a great job. And uh, I'll stand by you man to man no matter what, bro, and others will too. Um, but I just want to bring to it, I do think it's right and proper to bring to attention this issue concerning his defense of scripture. Bob's defense is either Catholic or postmodern theology. This is the kind of argument that Bob uses, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but this is how he, he argues. He basically says the, the, the church is what verifies scripture. The church is the historical reality that uh, verified what is scripture and chose what is scripture and uh, that's a very uh, dangerous statement and very dangerous ground to be on because that's a catholic view it's either a catholic view or it's either a uh, postmodern theology view that goes from schleimacher from the 19th century right up to the liberal theology of the uh, end of the 19th century right up to postmodern theology today they often take this argument of the church it is the historical reality that uh, gives authority to scripture that's a very dangerous dodgy ground to be on if you look at the westminster confession with whether you agree with the confession or not it has, it has the finest statement on the inspiration of scripture and it says that scripture bears witness to scripture and so it's important because if the church is authoritative and gives authority to scripture then the church becomes authoritative and you end up like the catholic church where the Catholic Church can err and make mistakes and, and be dodgy. So it's important that it's scripture that's authoritative over the church. It's a very important, significant point that John Calvin, Luther and many of the great reformers and Puritans like John Owen knew the significance of. And it's important when you're doing apologetics to remember that important principle. We can look at it, the history of the church. We can look at the history and we'll find information that will help us to defend scripture but it's not authoritative over scripture. Very important epistemological and theological view. So, Westminster Confession, have a read of it on the doctrine of scripture. It's very important. And showing you that scripture verifies scripture in the issue of canon of scripture, uh, The Heresy of Orthodoxy by Michael J. Kruger is a very helpful book published by Apollos on this issue. So that's the first point. The second point I want to talk about is Bob's understanding of textual criticism. Uh, this idea that um, it's the message that's important, not the words, that's not scriptural. If you study the Bible, the Bible would often says, I mean, G the Lord says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. He doesn't say, my message will not pass away. So every word of God is important. Uh, for for doctrine, for reproof, etc. So we have to defend all the words of Scripture, not just the message of Scripture. The message of Scripture is encapsulated in the word of Scripture. And so this idea that we just have to think about the message and it doesn't matter if if we've got 99% of Scripture and there's 1% that's not not textual variance uh, and, it's, and it doesn't matter because we've got the message, that's not the Protestant scriptural view scriptural view is every word of God is inspired and every word matters and that's why it's important where you stand on textual criticism I stand on the King James not not I'm not a King James only man but I stand on the King James because it's based on what is called the majority text which has the the last ending of marking which has the uh, the woman who's committed adultery uh, in it has the uh, John 9 comma in I stand on the majority text, which goes right back to Dean Bergen. Um, and so I, 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 that, that's a better textual method of defending the faith than the Textus Receptus, uh, than the uh, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus and the Westcott and Hawke theories, where 
they were using rationalism. And I've gone into that. If you want to know more about that, Google Dean Bergen, The Last Ending of Mark, and or go on to um, Trinitarian Bible Society and find out more about why the uh, majority text behind the King James is better than modern uh, textual criticism. So those are the three issues, uh, the, the issues that I wanted to tackle with Bob. Uh, the Catholic issue is, is very, very important. The textual critical issue is very important, uh, but it's, a, it's going to be a bit too technical for people. But if you want to defend scripture, I would suggest you read your Westminster Confession or the 1689, 1689 Baptist Confession and look at how scripture is defined there and how we defend scripture and read uh, Michael Kruger on the canon it's really important to read this book uh, by Apollos uh, and he's a mainstream academic uh, reformed academic on the textual criticism um, Robert Morris uh, Morris Roberts I think it is uh, has written quite extensively on this uh, if you go on to Bible League Quarterly they've written extensively on textual criticism if you go to Trinitarian Bible Society or Google Dean Bergen and look at Dean Bergen and how his textual criticism has been rejected by modern scholars but gives you a better basis of defending your Bible when I was debating uh, Ali Dawa this Sunday he tried to get me on textual criticism and you see him shift the debate away from it as soon as I got onto the majority text. He couldn't tackle me. He couldn't bring me down. I didn't have to say, oh, uh, we haven't got all the words of scripture. He, he, he couldn't tackle me on it. He, he had to leave it and go on to a different topic. Uh, this is a better way of defending the faith. So, Bob, you're doing a great job. Um, but I do think your defense of scripture is a little bit Catholic or postmodern theology. We need to get back to a more Protestant view on that. And on the issue of canon, uh, read literature like uh, Michael J. Kruger, uh, Opolis. Non-textual criticism, I know many people are going to drag their feet on that. You prepare to listen to James White and Jay Smith, who I admire and I love. But they're wrong. They've, been, they, they've taken a wrong path on the issue of textual criticism. Just because it's accepted by modern scholars and that all modern scholars agree with it. But if you're a good reformed uh, Calvinist and you really understood the history of theology, you would really understand how theology has been infiltrated by rationalism and textual criticism got influenced by rationalism. And even the great B.B. Warfield, who I love to bits and I've got nearly all his works in my study, I love B.B. Warfield, but even B.B. Warfield was influenced by rationalism when it came to textual criticism. And we need to get back to a more biblical, theological textual criticism. And that's getting back to Dean Bergen and the majority text. God bless you.